What up, fans? Welcome to Snack Chat Live. My name's Bren Tim. Today we are in San Pedro, Belize, also known as La Isla Bonita. San Pedro is an island known for its majestic beaches, crystal clear waters, amazing local Belizean food, and its close proximity to one of the most beautiful reefs in the entire ocean. This is the first time I've ever done a $10 a day episode, so I'm super excited to show you guys how you can eat really, really good for really, really cheap. Armed with nothing but a camera, some shades, and a whole lot of sunscreen, I'm going to show you guys just how far $10 USD can go on La Isla Bonita. Let's go. For breakfast, we're chowing down at one of my personal favorite spots on the island, Neri's Tacos. This restaurant is super popular amongst both locals and tourists for serving up delicious Belizean delicacies at extremely low prices. My first meal of the day, I'm going with a traditional Belizean breakfast. Check out the Fry Jack. What we've got here is fried dough, and in the middle, it's stuffed with cheese, beans, and chicken. Pow. If you come to Belize, you absolutely have to try the Fry Jacks. They are a national treasure. If you've never had one before, it's essentially delicious fried dough, and the texture is a combination of both really, really soft and super crispy in some parts. The inside is traditionally stuffed with cheese and beans, and then you can include any type of protein, like chicken, pork, <laughs> eggs, or even ham. This gigantic platter of food was only $1.75 USD, an absolutely mind-boggling value for this much food. As inexpensive as these fry jacks seem, Neri's is also serving a tacos for the price of three for 50 cents USD. If you're a light eater, this amount of food may be way too much to start your day with. What I usually do is come here for breakfast, eat half my fry jack in the morning, and then later on in the day when I'm hungry, I'll chow down on the other half. Usually when you want to describe a fry jack, if you want to say something something similar to a sopapilla because in Texas, the Mexican restaurants use it as a fried dough, sopapilla as a dessert. Sopapilla as a dessert. For a reference point, my kind friend here just told me that in Texas, the Fry Jack is known as a sopapilla, and they're traditionally served as a dessert with a little bit of ice cream and some cinnamon on top. This Fry Jack was so, so good. If you can't make it to Neri's Tacos, virtually every other restaurant in Belize is serving up a Fry Jack for breakfast. Just around the corner from Neri's is one of my other favorite breakfast and lunch spots. We're at a place called Lily's Deli, and I especially love coming here for their fresh made juices and icy cold, super sweet horchata. If you've watched my videos on Spain, you know how much I love Spanish horchata. Well, this is a little bit different. Here in Central America, they call it horchata, but in Spain, it's made with tiger nut, but here it's actually a sweetened rice drink. I'm absolutely addicted to horchata, even though it's terrible for my waistline. Some people I talk to find it to be a little too sweet, but the best way I can describe the flavor is imagine milk, but a little bit watered down with a heavy flavor of both vanilla and cinnamon. Cheers. The cost of this cup was only $1.25 USD, or $2.50 Belize. To me, horchata is like liquid breakfast. It's so incredibly sweet, it's super thick, and it's so refreshing. It's a great way to start the day, albeit pretty heavy and calorie laden, but it's so, so delicious. I certainly don't drink this every day, but on super hot mornings, it's a really nice treat to cool down with. One word of caution, since horchata is traditionally served with breakfast, you're gonna wanna get to the restaurant really, really early, because this is one of the first beverages that most places will sell out of. Okay, we're done with breakfast, and technically we're kinda done with dessert too. For what was about, mm, just over 1,000 calories, only cost us three dollars USD. We've still got seven more dollars to spend and a lot of daylight to burn. Now it's time to burn off those morning calories with a quick swim. After a few laps in the ocean, I've worked up a little bit of an appetite, but not quite enough for lunch. Luckily, I found this fresh fruit stand on the middle street. They're serving up virtually any fruit you would want. They're also making pre-cut bags of fruit. I went with the sour pears with chili powder for only $1 USD. I've been told that the sour pear is actually referred to as a sea grape here in the island. Let me assure you that this is one of the worst fruits I've ever had in my life. Extremely sour, extremely bitter. The pit inside the sea grapes is gigantic. There's such a tiny, tiny amount of pear flesh um, on each pit, it doesn't even make sense to eat it. I got this one with a little chili limon seasoning on top. 
that did nothing to improve the flavor. These are absolutely disgusting. Uh, boggles my mind why anyone in the universe would even want to try these. Um, for a dollar, probably wouldn't recommend getting these. Any other fruit at that stand, they'll look delicious. All right, it's lunchtime. This is the part of the episode where I gotta let you know that I've been on the island of San Pedro for over 31 days. So I feel uniquely qualified to show you guys the best spots to check out. Right now we're headed to one of my favorite restaurants called Papuceria Salvadoreno. Guys, I've gone there so many times, they actually gave me one of their shirts. Check out this swag, check out this trip. This is like the presidential seal right here. And for the record, the fact that they gave me this shirt does not mean that this restaurant is sponsoring me or anything like that. Shirt or no shirt, I would still take you guys here because the food is that good and that cheap. What I really love about this restaurant is that it's a family run business. Everything you see from the bar to the kitchen to the food being made in front of you is being prepared by one mother, two brothers, and then their sister. Another thing that makes Papuceria Salvadoreno really special is that all the pupusas are cooked right in front of the restaurant on the street. So you can see everything it takes to make pupusas from start to finish to your tummy. A pupusa is essentially a corn tortilla that's been filled with anything like rice, chicken, beans, cheese, you name it, they can stuff it in here. Because I'm still pretty full from my breakfast this morning, I only went with one pupusa, but the cost of this was only $1.25. Now these might look small, but I can assure you they're jam-packed. I got one here with pumpkin because I'm absolutely infatuated with it. Now this isn't like pumpkin you've had back in the States. This is almost like Belizean zucchini, but check this out. It's got a nice little like coleslaw slash salad mix that you can put on top. Got a little bit of mild sauce, and then we pull out the big guns here for just a drip, drop, drip of that mega spicy habanero. <laughs> Okay, I got my pupusa slawed up. I got it hot sauced up. I got it mild sauced up. Now we're about to chow down and you guys are gonna see what this delicious, actually not a Belizean, a Salvadorian traditional food is like. <coughs> guys, this is so, so good. The flavor of the pumpkin is unlike anything I've ever had. It's kind of like zucchini in appearance and texture, but the flavor is so much more robust than just regular old kini. And even though the pupusa looked kind of small, one is actually enough to get you through the day. Especially when you pile on top like the lettuce mixture, some hot sauce in there, and depending on what ingredient you stub with it, you might find that big things do indeed come in little packages. Y'all, the street food in Belize is the definition of cheap and delicious food. I'm right here in what's called the town square or the town park. It's the giant open space area right next to the water taxi. This is where you're gonna find anywhere from five to six food vendors operating at all different times of the day. I've come here for a little hydration and to finish off my night with a little bit of dinner. One thing you realize as you start going to more and more street food vendors and restaurants in Belize is that they absolutely are addicted to fresh, squeezed, delicious juice. I've been an absolute juice maniac since I've got here. Watermelon juice, lime juice, orange juice, papaya juice, limon juice, all of it is super fresh, all natural, and absolutely delicious. So before I chow down on dinner, let's lubricate the throat with a little bit of watermelon juice from my favorite food stand, Albertina's. Cheers. This bottle was only two Belize or one dollar USD and it's absolutely freezing cold. There's no extra added sugar. It's got an incredibly smooth, delicious flavor to it. I've never had a watermelon juice like this in my life. Fans, this is really, really good. The selection of juices at Albertina's changes day by day, but my absolute favorites are the papaya juice and the watermelon juice. All right, it's finally dinner time and I'm craving some chicken and I'm craving some tacos. So I've gone to Albertina's Fast Food. These delicious tacos come at an un unbelievably low price. You can get two tacos for only five Belize, which comes out to about $2.50. Wait, what? $2.50 for two tacos? You would never, ever, ever find those kind of prices in the United States. I mean, look at this thing. It's absolutely jam-packed with giant chunks of chicken. Huge tomatoes are in there. We've got a nice, firm corn tortilla. Ooh, I think I spot a little cilantro in there too. Taco time. Pow. <coughs> Mmm, 
Albertinas don't miss. Fans, I've had absolutely everything on their menu. The rice and beans is delicious. The chicken tacos are delicious. The shrimp tacos are delicious. The beef tacos are delicious. The shrimp burger is delicious. The beef burger is delicious. The chicken burger is delicious. Fans, I am absolutely stuffed and so satisfied. Let's recap all the food that we ate today. We started off the morning with the Fry Jack for only $1.75. We moved on to the Horchata for $1.25. We got a little midday snack by chowing down on those sour pears for $1. We then went to the Pupuseria to have a delicious pumpkin pupusa for only $1.25. We capped off the night by starting out with a mouth-watering watermelon juice for only $1. Then we ended all of it with two delicious chicken tacos for only $2.50. The total for all that delicious food was only $8.75. Guys, that is an absolutely incredible value for so much tasty food. I really, really hope you enjoyed this first episode in my new series where I try to show you guys how to get the most bang for your buck, whether you're a budgeting backpacker or just someone that's trying to save some cash. Now one thing before I say goodbye, I do not take credit for this idea at all. I think Rachel Ray was maybe the first to ever do like $20 in a day. And I know that one of my favorite travel bloggers, Drew Binsky, also does the $10 a day concept as well. And that's that. My name's Brent Tim. This was Snack Chat Live in San Pedro, Belize. And I'm saying ciao for now.